the OSI reference model will be the topic in this session. The International Standards Organization ISO is a multinational body dedicated to worldwide agreement on international standards as was established in the year 1947. As was first introduced in the late 1970s, an ISO standard that covers all aspects of network communications is the open system interconnection that is OSI model. So now what is OSI model and we know that in case of OSI model, we are going to have multiple different layers. So let us discuss this layered model that is OS, OSI layered model. Now here we are having this OSI layered model and here we are having this physical layer, data link layer, network layer, transport layer, session, presentation and the application layer. So this application layer is connected with the host and that application is connected with the another host and this host will be communicating through this application layer in this way through all these layers then the physical layer will be there and then the physical media will be there with the help of which the data will be transferred to the host B if it is host A I can consider that one as host B. So host B physical layer and in this way the data will get will get will be made available to the respective host B. In this way the host A can do the communication with the host B. Each and every layer has got a certain dedicated purpose and for which this layered abstraction is there. Each and every layer should work independently with some dedicated purpose or dedicated services it should provide. So each and every layer should provide some dedicated service to the next higher layer, layer. and obviously each layer should work independently so that there will be minimum data transfer between the adjacent layers. And here you see this is our OSI reference model. So if question comes in your exams then you are supposed to draw this respective layered model. And application layer and that application layer is having some protocols and there is a presentation layer protocol, session layer protocol, transport layer protocol and so on. We know that in the next chapters we will be discussing the router router works up to the network layer. So that is why it is, the, it is it is being shown that there is an internal subnet protocol you can find this one and that is that is a router this router and that router how they are communicating with each other. So that has been shown that is the network layer up to which the router works. So that is why it is called internal subnet protocol and here you see for each and every layer what is the respective data transfer unit. Here it is bit, here it is frame, packet, there is a transport protocol data unit, there is the session protocol data unit, presentation protocol data unit and application protocol data unit. So there is a name of unit exchanged, so that has been written there. So in this way this particular diagram you are supposed to remember and obviously this particular layers are to be written in this particular order only. A layer should be created where a different abstraction is needed. Each layer should perform a well defined function. So it should not be done in this way that a layer will have multiple dedicated functions. Also it should not be done that a function will get assigned to the two adjacent layers. A function of each layer should be chosen with an eye towards defining internationally standardized protocols. A layer boundary should be chosen to minimize the information flow across the interfaces that will indicate that layer should work independently. And the number of layers should be large enough that distinct functions need not to be thrown together in the same layer out of necessity and small enough that the architecture does not become unwieldy. So that means the number of layers should be large enough so that uh, multiple dedicated tasks should get assigned on the same layer and the layer should not be the number of layers should be not very much uh, very not in with a high number of layers because in that case what will happen the same activity will get or the same functionality will get assigned onto the multiple layers and the layers will become unwieldy. So in this way we have, we have got this idea that what are the different aspects that should be kept in mind while defining this layered architecture in case of OSI reference model. Thanks for watching this video. Tutorialspoint.com 
Simply Easy Learning.